Well, it's my great pleasure to present our today's speaker, first speaker of this year, Professor Sergei Konyagin, and the title of his talk you can see at the print screen. And thank you very much, Professor Konyagin, for agreeing to deliver a lecture at our seminar. And please go ahead. Thank you very much. Okay. I would like to thank Alexei Nikolaevich for his for inviting me to give a talk at the seminar. You see the title on the normal there is projection from L infinity to LP. So and I'll talk about about one result from our joint paper with Kefilek, Sexman and Sape. The paper was published about two years ago. Uh, you can find the paper on archive. My talk will be split into three parts. One dimensional case, um, finite dimensional case, and infinite dimensional case. As usually, I can I consider the torus T. T uh, can be treated as as the segment minus pi pi. If identified eight points, so we we consider the probability measure mu on, on t. So mu of t is one. Uh, 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 we take p from one infinity. First, we don't include infinity. And for any p, we can define by standard way the space LP, LP of t. Uh, uh, we'll consider complex with complex valued functions, so all functions can map t to the set of complex numbers. And the LP of t is uh, the set of integrable complex valued functions f defined on t such that lp norm is finite lp norm is defined by it is a non-negative number defined by this equality also we consider l infinity l infinity is the space of essentially bounded functions from t to this to the set of complex numbers if p is one, uh, um, we usually write l of t instead of l one of t. L, so l of t is the set of all integrable functions, and uh, we can associate with, with, with if any integrable function f, it's Fourier series by standard way. Okay, and now we can try define. There is projection for, uh, for an integrable function f. So it is defined by this equality. So we take its Fourier series. Uh, we take all terms of non-negative frequencies and and we take the sum. This operator is well defined if f is an element from LP. And p is greater than one. Uh, actually, this is a bounded uh, operator on the space LP. If p is greater than one, uh, it, it is a famous uh, theorem of of Marcellaris. Actually, this operator can be defined for any f is l, but uh, but the series is not necessarily a Fourier series, so uh, actually, if L, if is L, then uh, uh, there is operator applied to this function. Yes, but uh, it is easy to see that in the case where p is equal to 2, uh, 
Uh, we see that the very expansion is, is the expansion uh, there. Uh, with respect to an uh, autonomous system, and uh, there is projection is an orthogonal projection. So the, the norm of this operator is one. Well, uh, what is uh, the norm of this operator in the space is LP. Uh, so this, the norm was found by Hollenbeck and Verbitsky in 2000, uh, and, and they proved that this norm is equal to this guy. Uh, you see that if P is not two, the norm is greater than one. So if, if P is two, the norm is one. If P is not two, it is greater than one. Actually, we, we can generalize the, the, the consideration of norms. Uh, let us consider two numbers, P and Q between two and infinity, and, uh, and we can define the, the norm of the risk operator as an operator from LQ to LP. If uh, uh, the operator is not bounded operator from, from LQ to LP, uh, then we consider that this number is infinity. And uh, it is the case if P is greater than, than Q. Uh, if P is greater than, than Q, we see that uh, the result of the risk operator of a function from LQ is not necessarily a function from LP, so the operator is unbounded and the norm is infinity. Also, it is easy to see that the norm is infinity if P equals to Q and equals to infinity. Uh, actually, uh, it is easy to construct a continuous function f such that uh, there is projection of this function is not a bounded function. So, uh, to deal with the, the norm of the operator, we, we will assume that P is greater than or equal to 2, Q is greater than or equal to P, and P is less than infinity. It, it is well known that, that uh, the norm, the LQ norm is greater than or equal to the, to the LP norm, so we have the following inequality. That uh, uh, the norm of this operator is finite. This is a bounded operator from L LQ to LP under our suppositions. Moreover, if P is two, that uh, then we see for, for this inequality, then uh, the norm of the uh, there is operator from LQ to L from LQ to L two from LQ to L two is at most one, but it cannot be less than one, so in this case, the norm is one. So we know that if P is Q, and we consider the norm as the operator from LP to LP, and P is greater than two, then the norm is greater than one. But uh, it can happen, why not, that uh, the norm of this operator could be one if Q is greater than P, P is greater than two. It was a nice question for which P, and the norm of this operator from L infinity to tell P is equal to one. The answer was given by Marceau and Sepp in 2011. They showed that this norm is one if P is at most two, and this norm is greater than one if P is greater than four. 
Uh, let me give some comments uh, on the proof. First, we can see the case where P is, is 4. Uh, so, uh, I is the identity operator and P minus is, is the difference between I and P plus. So, so P, P minus is the set of all terms of the Fourier series of our function f with negative frequencies. And we see that the functions P plus, P plus of f square and P minus of f square are, are orthogonal. And, and that's, yes, actually, uh, here it's written f is bounded function, it's not necessarily bounded, it's, it is orthogonal if phi is from L2. For example, yeah. Oh, yeah. but OK, we, we need the, the case if if is a bounded function, essentially bounded function. So um, we can write the chain of equalities and inequalities. Uh, so the norm of the risk operator L4 norm to the 4 power can be can be written as the square of the of delta norms of the square on the risk projection. Next, if we add to the function p, p plus of f square the orthogonal function p minus p minus of f square, the L2 norm can only increase so we have this inequality and, and now we we write the difference of squares as, as the product of, of the sum and the difference so we have this equality next we use that the l2 norm of the product is bounded by the infinite norm of Or the first factor and the L2 norm of the second factor, the, this is the L infinity norm and the L2 norm of the second factor can be bounded by L2 norm of F and, uh, and the L2 norm of F can be bounded by L infinity norm of F, so we have this equality. If you compare the left hand side and the right hand side, you see that uh, the norm of the operator, uh, there is operator P plus is at most one. So it is one. Moreover, we see that the mapping is associated with any P, the norm of the uh, operator, uh, or there is operator from L infinity to LP, the norm is non-decreasing function of P. And so if P is less than four, so this norm is also at most one, so it is one. The first part of the theorem of Marceau and Seb, actually is done. And uh, I'll give some comments without details. Uh, what happens if P is greater than four? So Marzo and Seb define the following function, f of x. You see that this function, the absolute value of this function is one for any real number x. So for any P, LP norm of F is one. And, uh, and we want to estimate the norm of the risk projection of, of the function F. It is possible to evaluate the risk projection. It has a quite simple form. 
and let us fix p and if we consider the LP norm of or this guy as as a function of, of epsilon so we can take a power the power series expansion as a function of epsilon and 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 we see that the first and the second terms are written here so one plus uh, something times epsilon square uh, plus some small terms and and we see that uh, uh, if p is greater than four uh, then this coefficient is greater is positive is greater than zero it's positive and if epsilon is small so you see that the lp norm of there is projection is greater than one but the, the next question and actually i don't know a complete answer to, to this question for which q and p uh, okay again we consider that that p is greater than 2 q is greater than p for which q and p we have uh, the equation that the normal there is uh, projection is one um, uh, we can find some examples using the, the risk torrent theorem you see that there is operator is is bound to the operator of more more over the operator of norm one is operator from l2 to l2 and we know that also it has norm one as uh, an operator from l infinity to l4 and now we have uh, we can use the restore and interpolation theorem so we, we use this notation q0 q0 is 2 p0 is 2 q1 is infinity p1 is 4 and for any alpha from 0 to 1 we can define p and q by this by these equalities and the interpolation theory says that the norm of the operator p plus from L q to L p is, is also bounded by one. Actually, this norm is equal to one if p and q are defined by these equalities. In particular, if you take alpha to be equal to one half, then we can include the following equality: that the norm of the operator from four to from L four to L eight over three is one okay now we we turn to to the multi-dimensional case In this case was also uh, yes excuse me i want to say that maybe it is a, an interesting an interesting question to to find all pairs q and p q and p for which the norm and there is projection is one. Marceau and uh, SAP in, in their paper also studied uh, five dimensional spaces and infinite dimensional spaces. And uh, let us consider. Uh, the n-dimensional torus. So the elements of the torus are uh, are denoted by bold bold letters, and and bold letters uh, has uh, has coordinates. So x has n, n coordinates, x x one etc. x one and, um, and this is related to other letters. So for, for example. The bold K denotes an n-dimensional 
integral vectors and the coordinates of um, the bold k are, are denoted by k1, etc., k sub n. Also, uh, we denote it by measure, the measure related to the uh, j coordinate xj. And, and we can we can define then dimensional then dimensional measure so mu of n is also the probability measure on the n so i i'll not write the, the definition of lp uh, on the definition of the multi the multi dimensional free series it is clear how to How to write, but how to define the risk projection? The risk projection is defined by this formula. So we, we now we we label only the terms with non-zero frequencies. All all co coordinates of of k should be non-negative. Again. This function is well defined for f from LP if P is greater than one. Because uh, the theorem of Marcel Ritz uh, holds uh, as well as uh, in the n dimensional case as well as as, uh, as for one dimensional case uh, for P greater than one, everything is is fine. Let me note that uh, if n is greater than two, then the, and f is an arbitrary integrable function, then uh, there is operator uh, is in general not defined. So p n plus of f, it may be that it doesn't represent any function. Um, but but we, we are interested we are interested in the case if function f is LP and p is at least two and again we can we can define the the normal operator uh, and there is operator from LQ to LQ to LP uh, again again we impose this suppositions and uh, and under this supposition the norm of this operator is finite so this is the bounded operator for milk to p next we will do some simple observations the first is that if we restrict the operator a p n plus on the subspace of functions actually dependent on the on the first n minus one coordinate so assume that uh, we can see the functions not dependent on the on xn so in the the norm of this operator is is just the, the norm p n minus one plus from this operator from lq to lp Of course, the, the norm of the, of the risk operator on the whole space is, is uh, greater than or equal to um, the norm on a subspace. So we see that, uh, that um, the function of, uh, which assigns to n the norm of the operator pn plus is an undecreasing function of n. function of n. Uh, so, um, moreover, it's possible to deduce from Hilder's inequality that this this mapping is continuous, and moreover, it is locally Lipschitzian. It is a helpful remark. 
more so in shape, consider the number Pn. It is the supremum of P such that the norm of this operator from L infinity to LP is one. Actually, the, uh, this magnitude was introduced much before the paper of Marceau and Seip. Uh, it was called by critical exponent by Figel, Ivanets and Pilchinsky, 1948. And clearly, Pn is at least two because if 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 you take p is two, the, then we know that the norm uh, on this operator is is one. And from the previous discussion, we see that Pn is is less than or equal to Pn minus one. And we know that P1 is 4. So for any n, Pn is at most 4. Uh, next, uh, since uh, the mapping assigned to, to P, the, the norm at this operator is non-decreasing and continuous, the critical exponent has the following property. If P is less than or equal to Pn, then the norm of the respirator is 1. If P is greater than Pn, then the norm of the respirator is greater than 1. Oh, uh, if n is 1, the exact value of Pn is unknown, and moreover, there is a big gap between known, known upper and lower estimates. And what is known, it is known for, from, for, from our so and shape that for any n, Pn is greater than 2. Uh, they, they prove the following thing is for it. This is a lower estimate. Uh, the equality was proven by induction on n. We'll give some comments on the proof for the case n equals to 2. And for other values of n, the proof is actually the similar. So we have to consider partial risk projections for any g. We consider the following partial risk separator. So we take the sum over such vector k that the j if coordinate is non negative. And we have no restrictions on other coordinates, so this is a partial operator. And it is easy to, to prove that the norm of the, this partial risk operator is. It's just a norm of one dimensional risk operator, risk projection, and so. If you consider that the case n is 2, then the risk operator is a composition of two partial risk operators, p21 plus and p22 plus. Um, but we can say something about both operators, p21 plus. Uh, has the norm 1, it's an operator from L infinity to L4, and we, and we know that uh, P2, and we can say about the norm of the operator P22 plus, uh, because uh, they know the norm of the one dimensional risk operator from L4 to L8 over 3, so this norm is, all, is, is also 1, and uh, the norm of the composition operator is bounded by the product of the norm of factors, so it is at most one, so it's required. Okay. Now we will go to, to the infinite dimensional case. So 
Epson Mu Infinity, the notes we have measured. Normalize so that the measure of t infinity is one. Again, we can we can define the space as LP. And any function f integrable function on t infinity has its free expansion. But I have to I have to pay your attention that here we we have the sum of other vectors case such that only finitely many coordinates of k differ from differ from zero. So, uh, of course, uh, if one if one if one says about the infinite dimensional torus, so he can he can be asked uh, is is it interesting? It seems that maybe it is an exotic subject. It is not an exotic subject. It is a useful subject, but. Because uh, it it has it has a deep connection between uh, it has a, bit, uh, a connection if generalized gener generalized directly series. Uh, what is the generalized and directly series for so for us? It is a following series, so we we can. We can take the following sum. So here R is R uh, runs over the set of positive rational numbers. Yeah, usually, uh, usual the directly series uh, is 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 uh, the sum of this kind, the sum of this kind, uh, where uh, R runs over the set of positive integers. But in general, uh, we can take uh, an, uh, other numbers and we consider rational numbers R. And here, um, here it, it is enormous. So, if a a r if a r are good, so we uh, this series represents a function that defined on on the real line and that is an almost periodic function and we we, we can define l p norm of of such functions and and actually, actually, such functions can be associated with infinite, infinite dimensional periodic functions. So, what what can we do? We we can represent R is R is a, as a uh, product of powers of primes. So, so uh, here the exponents can be positive or negative. And uh, so uh, any rational number uh, R can be associated with uh, an infinite uh, vector of Integers, the integers are exponents of primes, and uh, and and this trick so uh, gives us um, the possibility to uh, to turn from uh, 
from the generalized Dirichlet Lee series to infinite dimensional Fourier series and, and vice versa. And we again can define the race operator. The race operator on the infinite dimensional torus. And we can ask about the norm of this guy for which Q and P is this. This number is finite. Again, we consider that Q and P are greater than or equal to two. And, and again, if P is two, then it is easy to see that uh, the norm of this operator is one. But now we, we don't claim that uh, that for, for any p and q, if if q is uh, is greater than or equal to to p and p is less than infinity, we, we, we cannot claim that this norm, uh, this operator, the this operator is necessarily bounded. We cannot claim that this number is finite, and we'll say that uh, that is not finite. Actually, the difference is that there is no risk theorem for infinite dimensional torus for the infinite dimensional torus. And uh, what was proved in the same paper by Marceau and Sepp? Uh, they consider the, the limit the limit of critical exponents Pn as n tends to infinity. Uh, you see that uh, Pn is non-increasing is a non-increasing sequence and all elements of on, on, on this sequence are greater than two. So P infinity is at least two. But in that paper, Marceau and Sip uh, did not de determine if P infinity is two or not. Uh, but they uh, they proved that if P infinity is two, then uh, then also by 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 the theorem. Uh, there are some p and q uh, such that p, p in, uh, the norm of the separator from l q to l p is one if p infinity is greater than two. But if p infinity is two, then uh, then this norm is infinity for any p greater than two for any q. And for any p is greater than two. So the principal question was to understand if the limit of the critical exponents, the limit of p n is two, or it is greater than two. Okay. And what is our result? We uh, we prove that the limit is two. So p p infinity is two, and there is projection on the infinite dimensional torus is not bounded from L q to L p, uh, where p and q are greater than two. Uh, Actually, the, the proof is rather complicated and technical, and, and of course, I, I have no any possibility to to give to give the proof. But but I want to to mention the idea of our approach. Actually, we can reduce it to to the Dirichlet kernel uh, 
multi-dimensional Dirichlet kernels. So let d let d be a positive integer. D is at least two. R is greater than zero, and and, and we define the dimensional Dirichlet kernel. So the norm is in L2 is the usual Euclidean norm of the d-dimensional vector k. And Babinka proved that for any d greater than or equal to 2, we have the following inequality. Actually, the the upper no, the upper estimate was known, so this is the correct for any fixed d. This is the correct order. The correct order of this norm is r to to the power d minus one over two. You see that uh, here I write two years. Uh, I write it because in 1971 uh, the paper was. Uh, was written. It was a preprinted, and it, it was difficult to to have an access to this paper. And after the death, the, after the death of Konstantin Ivanovich in 2008, the journal publication appeared. So I write two years here. Well, for function, for any integral of function, the can define its spherical partial sums by this way. It is it is very very well known and uh, well known subject, and it was studied by many by many authors. Uh, the the properties of spherical partial sums. Let q is greater than one, and we we consider a function. We consider the following function. So f of x, what is the f of x? Uh, so here, here k, the vector k uh, runs over all integral points from the cube. The cube is minus r to r to to the power d, and uh, so the this is the product of of the one-dimensional functions. Uh, uh, the norm of the of the, of the corresponding fundamental function is it is uh, the Dirichlet kernel. Well, the dimension one it is well known and uh, and uh, and this for and this follows that the uh, elko norm of this function can be estimated by this way uh, actually again this this bound is is correct in the order so this is the correct order we see that the spherical partial sum of the function f is the the dimensional directly kernel, and so we can we can compare the the L norm of our function f and and the L one norm of its partial sum. And and we see that and we see that uh, that this operator has a lower estimate and if we fix yeah, if we fix q and we and and we take a large number positive in series d then the exponent here here is positive and so for large r the number on the right hand side is greater than one so the, the norm of this operator is greater than one the norm of this operator is greater than one 
And actually, we use some trick to to turn from the spherical partial sums to uh, to to this operator uh, to the operator in the space on some large dimension uh, and then then <coughs> the inequality written in the previous slide implies the following inequality so actually it is possible to write an explicit estimate of n but we, we did not we did not do it next if you know this estimate we have to do a simple a, sim, a simple step step and this is actually the last step we can use the, the duality. Let us take any p greater than two, and and q is a conjugate number. Then we have this equality by duality, and so we see that. What can we see? That for any p greater than two, we can write a large number n such that. Uh, such that uh, the norm of this reciprocal is greater than one. So for such n, we, we see that p n is less than p. That's required. Okay. I'm done. Thank you. Okay, Professor Knegger, many thanks for a very nice lecture. And we have uh, time for uh, questions. So if there are questions, you can raise participant can raise a hand or just go ahead and ask question. Okay, maybe meanwhile I have some wondering. Ah, we have a question from Professor Rudsky. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello? See. This is a very nice talk. Ah, 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 sorry, sorry. Can you hear me? Uh, it is not easy to hear. Uh, uh, I have the following question. Uh, you get uh, uh, the result that uh, you're, uh, if uh, there are no pairs of uh, P and Q other than two or that the infinite dimensional risk projection is bounded, yes? Uh, it is difficult to, to hear you. So you, uh, you're asking something about boundedness of what? Uh, uh, I want to ask if uh, uh, there are poss possible uh, more refined results uh, uh, where you uh, go outside the Lebesgue scale of spaces and consider some early spaces. Uh, are there any results uh, to this effect? Professor, did you hear a question? Because I understood uh, that the question was what about Orlich spaces instead of Lebesgue space? If there is ah, something known ah, about ah, this. Ah, yes, about other spaces. Yes, it, was, it wasn't easy to hear. Yes, uh, uh, from, uh, thank oh. you because of it. Yes. Uh, uh, no, we did not consider our spaces. No. I, I, I can't say anything. It, it, it's a good question. Yes, it's a good question. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I, I, but you see that even in one dimension, in, in, in one dimension, we, uh, the situation is not quite, quite clear. We don't, we don't not know, we don't know for, for which pairs Q and P the, the normal is operator is one, isn't? Ah. Uh, 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 thank you. Oh, no, we, 
Okay, thank you. Yes, 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 excuse me, yes, I, I, I can say something with uh, what is not for finitely dimension spaces. Uh, 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 actually, uh, it is clear what uh, what conditions uh, should be uh, supposed to, to, to our original function f to, to have uh, there is a parameter of this function um, to be a function from L. If you know that f belongs to L um, times log L to the power d, uh, then um, uh, there is a parameter is a function from L. You see, the, uh, if actually uh, f is a function from L, log L to, to the power k, and, and k is greater than d, the, then taken there is projection, we, we lose d in the exponent, yes? Uh, so some... Um, yeah, I guess the idea, maybe for the next question... Uh, oh, uh, uh, so some partial cases. Uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, of course, um, uh, the buttons uh, both studied uh, in one-dimensional case and probably in finite-dimensional case. But we, uh, we did not deal with this problem, and then we have any any news about this question. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Kanat Tulenov. Tulenov? No, Kanat Tulenov. Can you hear us? You raised your hand. Yes, I can you hear it. me? Okay, yes, we do. Okay, okay. My question is about uh, partial sum. When you study the partial sum operator, so as a norm of K, you study it, so we call L infinity norm. So what happens yes. if you, if we consider an, another worm, for example, L1 norm? Have you studied this? If you study another norm in... Well, when you study partial sum, partial sum. Ah, um, partial sums of spherical... Spherical sums. I I'm not ready to answer. Of course, it it was started, but but now I don't remember. So sorry. Because the convergence is so uh, depend on um, on this. Oh. For example, can you open the 17th slide? Can 17th slide. I don't remember, so... Okay. Maybe we proceed to the next question. Sorry, yes, I have... Uh, yes, please. Sergei Sadov. Yes, I, I see the hand by Sergei Sadov, but I don't hear you. So, you don't hear me? No, no. I see the hand of another participant, but he oh, yes. oh, he yes. is not connected, probably some troubles maybe with uh, connection. Okay, meanwhile, I have uh, one question. Um, you see, um, you proved that uh, your operator, this operator is not bounded for from LP to LQ for uh, P and Q bigger than... Uh, yes, 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 right, right. Okay, maybe uh, I, I remember that, the, for, in, for instance, if you consider Berman projection, which, which is also related to risk projection, then it is not bounded in L1, but there are papers by certain mathematicians, they slightly improved L1 space, such that the same projection 
remains became bounded in this space. So maybe uh, any idea of how to improve or how to modify LP space in order to ensure boundedness. Or, in any in any case, it's possible. Whether or not it's possible. Yes, you want to modify the norm. I don't know. It. It's a good question. Yeah, just a general wondering. And maybe another also general wondering because your number four, crucial number four, it's kind of giving me an idea. You see, um, hardy space H2 is included in Berman space A4. And the same, is, the same is true for HP included in a hard, uh, Berman space A2P. So, and the idea of this inclusion uh, has to do with function space properties, with coefficients, with coefficient multipliers. Maybe there are some function theory behind the uh, boundedness or unboundedness of the projection after the P equals to four. I don't know. Is it, uh, okay, but uh, of course, of course, it was a general question. Of, of course. Yes, it is some theory behind. Of course, it's it's difficult to to answer such questions. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's a question for. For a study, yes, for, for a few yes. Study. Okay. Well, maybe more questions. Well, I don't see. I, I see the hand by Kanatulino, but I guess ah, okay, no, no more. Okay. Uh, excuse me again. So as far as I know, this uh, risk transform the boundedness is equivalent to the Hilbert transform. So is there anything in infinite dimensional case? Yes, again, it's, it's a good question, but uh, it, unfortunately, again, I can't say anything. So uh, I, your question is how to to define the Hilbert transform in an infinite dimensional space? Yes, yes. I don't know. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe more questions? Well, we had very nice discussion for our first seminar. We had very nice talk by Professor Kanyagin. And let us thank Professor Kanyagin for a very nice presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for opening series of our seminars for this year. For this year. Thank you. Very nice talk and many thanks. <laughs>